Lifting Up Jesus, Opening His Word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. Hi, this is Tim with Morial TV and Morial Radio here live via Skype with James Jacob Prash. Uh, Jacob, one of the believers, had the question, uh, Dear Jacob, what is your take on the general background of Isaiah 56 through 66? I do take that as a separate section following Alec Mortier's analysis, the book of the anointed conqueror spoken to a people waiting for the blessed hope. I have only heard Alex Montier speak once, but I am familiar with him as a scholar, and I actually know his son Steve quite well. His son Steve was one of my lecturers, professors in seminary and so forth, and Bible college. Alex Montier comes from a Reformed Evangelical Anglican tradition. Although he was not like John Stott in John Stott's vehement opposition to Zionism, or John Stott's teaming up with people like Stephen Sizer. He was not that. Theologically, he comes very much from that camp. That is essentially replacement theology, and that, uh, again, it's Reformed. It's Calvinistic, and it's Anglican. That's where he comes from. He'd be in, in that category. He came from the same school of thought as John Stott and certain others, okay? And uh, N.T. Wright and Nigel Wright. Again, he doesn't have the same views as Nigel Wright on every issue, but they're all in that same general wing of Anglican evangelicism, the Reformed camp. Alex Mortier is a competent scholar and linguist in terms of his capacity to uphold conservative evangelical orthodoxy regarding the text. He... <coughs> <clears throat> obviously would be somebody you could cite in refuting things like Deutero-Isaiah, the idea that there's two books of Isaiah, or Trito-Isaiah. Things like that, he would be correct. He would also be correct here in saying, after the four servant songs, Isaiah 53, there is a shift, and there is this idea of an anointed redeemer who is going to come and a messianic expectation. In that, he would be correct. Where Alex Mortier and I would differ, of course, is again his reformed replacement theology. I would see this as having a specific application to Israel and the Jews. Although you can have aspects of it that also speak to the church broadly, it has a specific Judeo-centric meaning as well. And there is a shift in time frame for the last days. It becomes eschatological, particularly as we build up to chapters 65 and 66. Chapter 63 deals with the eschaton. So it's something like this. Liberal scholars, higher critics, generally non-believers, have argued that there are two or three books of Isaiah. They make this argument on the fact that you have a genre shift, a shift in literary genre, beginning in chapter 40, verse 1. Now remember, the chapters are not in the original canon and the original text. People added them later. It is true that you move to Hebrew poetry. The literary genre changes from narrative, a story, with historicity, the Hebrew poetry in chapter 40, that is true. But that does not mean that there's two different authors. The Dead Sea Scrolls 
show no discontinuity. Nothing in Qumran and the Isaiah scroll from Qumran shows any discontinuity between chapter 39 and chapter 40. Some liberals have even gone further and said there's a Chitto Isaiah. Again, so far, Alec uh, Mortier and people like myself would be on the same page, largely resisting this presuppositional argumentation from the liberal camp. The arguments they have further break down for the following reasons. You have Hebrew poetry earlier in the book of Isaiah, in the earlier chapters, and you also have not only narrative, but elements of apocalyptic in the earlier chapters. So therefore, their emphasis on the genre shift in chapter 40 is greatly overstated because you have micro-genre shifts throughout the book, even in the earlier chapters. Secondly, you have a continuity of themes. The notion of a messianic redeemer that you see in chapters 56 through 66 is also found in the earlier chapters, such as chapter 11. The nations will resort to the short of Jishai, the root of Jesse, and so forth. The messianic theme is consistent throughout Isaiah. So is the theme of Israel's sin consistent throughout the book of Isaiah. So there's a consistency. There's not the discontinuity higher critics like to say. In this, again, Alec Moitier would be firmly in the conservative evangelical camp, and I with him. Some people have studied Isaiah with remarkable insight, given the fact that Israel had not yet been reborn as a nation, given the fact that the Dead Sea Scrolls had not yet been discovered, given many such important factors, Harry Ironside wrote an incredibly insightful commentary on the book of Isaiah in his day over 100 years ago. It was incredibly insightful. His accuracy was astounding, particularly in light of the time he wrote it in. Remember, there were evangelical preachers and commentators and expositors, theologians, going back to the Puritans, certainly the early Methodists, John Wesley among them, who believed Israel would have to be reborn again as a nation. This is where Alex Mortier begins to lose it. All of these things in his thinking generally are ecclesiocentric instead of Judeocentric. I'm not saying it doesn't have application to the church but not to the negation of what it means for Israel. After the four servant songs, after Isaiah 53, once the four servant songs are finished, you do have a shift. And this shift begins to build up the concluding arguments of Isaiah. His concluding arguments, however, are very much in harmony with his opening arguments in the book. Israel's sin the need for the Messiah. Come, let us reason together. God wanting to reason with man. Come, state your case, saith the Lord. There are also prophecies concerning the Gentile church in Isaiah 65. And it's interesting that the Hebrew word for nation, goy, is used in Isaiah for Israel. Israel is called a goy, a Gentile. It's called a nation. Uh, but it's talking about Israel. When you get to chapter 66, we see heaven is God's throne, and there is a joy in Jerusalem's future beginning in verse 10 of chapter 66. This points to the millennial reign of the Messiah from the throne of David. None of this factors into the thinking of Alex Mortier because of where he comes from. These people are generally not premillennial, they are generally replacement theology, and they are tainted by Calvinistic presupposition. However, they are conservative evangelicals who do defend the authority and authenticity of the text against the bogus presuppositions of liberal higher critics. I trust this helps. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Thank you, Jacob.